First John, uh, chapter three. Yep, First John chapter three, and uh, verse sixteen. <coughs> this is a verse that I. It's the reason I believe as Christians why we should do what we do. Okay. I really I have a very big belief in this. First John three sixteen, and it says, "Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren." Mm. This is a verse that really, really resonates with me, and I say that because, like we always thought, Christ laid His life down for us; yep. we should do so for our our brethren. Mm. But I, I, it's so important because they are our family, the church, are our family. You know, and it's important that no matter what is required, we lay down our lives for the brethren. We sacrifice for the brethren. Like we always talk about ministry requires sacrifice. But this verse, I just love it because because he laid down his life for us, we are ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Mm. We are ought to. I love it. We are ought to. We're not, oh, if the opportunity is there, we are ought to. We must it's lay down our life for the brethren. Require it. And I feel like it's something that... Everyone can do more. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I like to do my best. I like to think that I give as much time as I can for brethren or ages. It doesn't matter who, whatever they need, I, I, I yeah. give it all. Yeah, That's what I, I like to think I do. And I, I, and I can always be better in that. But I think it's so important that more people in whatever church setting is realize that there's the, there's the service and then there might be a few meetings in between, but it's the fellowship mm. and, it's, and it's the catch-ups in the week. Yeah. And it's the sacrifice that people were quiet to, it's just opening up your house or going to a cafe, having a coffee. Or if they need help with something. Like I got a call the other night at 2 o'clock in the morning to go do something. Mm. Didn't need to go do it. But the point I'm trying to make is that we are all to lay down our lives for our brethren. It's important. They are our family. They are our church. They are also God's people and we mm-hmm. must lay down our lives for them. I love this verse. I, I, I love it. It's a great one because on top of everything you're saying, the, the word that stood out to me in the entire verse was perceive. Mm. So what he's saying there is we now understand, we see and understand the love of God yeah. because he laid down his life for us. What that means is we now understand what love is because of what he did for us and the example he paid. Mm. And it's just like, wow, you truly can't understand love mm. until you understand his death on the cross. Mm. And that's massive because um, that's a huge point. Like I know it's something that a lot of couples discuss in early marriage, even late marriage, like trying to uh, reconnect and all that stuff. It's all about the fact that we don't really understand what love is as humans until we understand what he did for us and how he displayed his love for us. Mm. I think that's huge. Mm. Like if you really think about it, you truly cannot understand what it means to love someone or to be loved until you understand what Christ did on the cross. That is yeah. the ultimate example of what love is. Absolutely. And I feel like, could be separate from this, but I feel like we talk about Christ's death on the cross as, oh, he died on the cross. Yes. yes. And I feel like yeah, we really don't. underestimate talk, talk, yes. exactly yes, sir. The, what he went through on the cross. A hundred percent. The one thing that sticks out to me is Mark Moom, when we were in Epic, and he went into verse by verse and into details mm. of the exact... Mm sufferings that Christ did on the cross on the cross and you sit and you cry and, and but we people talk about it yeah oh yeah Christ died for us Christ died for us yeah but do, it's because, do you understand it's because the, 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 it's become the pain so, he went yeah bro it's become so just uh, part of common. Christianity yeah it's so common we're, we're just we just treat it like it's a side thought it's something that happened yeah move on yeah well of course but bro, it's yeah I couldn't agree with you more I love it when Easter and Christmas comes up because I, I preach this I teach the same lessons at Christmas and Easter every single year to the kids. Um, obviously, the weeks surrounding it, I change it up a bit. But on those specific two days, I teach a lesson at Easter where I go through, like you said, verse by verse, but I explain it in our our terms. Like, I go through the story of Christ, everything leading up to his death on the cross and his resurrection. And when you actually sit back and think about the fact that he did all of that, and he is the creator of the universe. Mm. And he did all of that for you individually. That is powerful. That is massive. And it's something we take for granted every single day as yeah, Christians. I agree. Something you mentioned when you talk about creating the universe. I jumped on with a mate 
a few months back, probably I think during lockdown. And he, there's an app where he had gone through and you can see space and everything in space. Yeah. And you just look and oh, like one o'clock in the morning, I looked for an hour and a half. I didn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. My man and I were looking through it together and, and he was showing me all the different plans that he had done because he had bought it. It was like an for like 30 bucks on the computer. He had bought it and he, had, he was showing me all this stuff. And then after all we talked about, man, that's crazy. This is how so small, but it does this, whatever. And we're talking about it. At the end of it, he goes, God created all this. And you just sit back and, and it blows our mm. mind that we think, oh, it's just earth. Mm. But it's nuts. I, I, I sat there and I go, we underestimate God's creation. We Daily, we underestimate just how powerful God is. We underestimate the, the gravity of who it is that we serve. We really do, bro, mm. because you think about it, mate. He created all of that. Everything we see, everything that is a part of our universe creation. Yet he still finds it necessary to have a personal relationship with each and every single one of us. Mm. And ladies and gents, if that does not convict you, if that does not talk to you or speak to you in a powerful way to think that the God of the universe wants to have a specific relationship with you, I don't know what is going to get you to wake up. Because if you don't have a relationship with him, he is asking you to come at his feet and speak to him and accept him as your Lord and Savior. He wants nothing else. Mm. That was the whole point. I'm sorry, I'm random, rambling, I'm going, but that was the whole point of him coming to earth. Mm. That was the whole point of this. That's that's the, mm. the reason for it. It's the reason we do every single church service. It's the reason we go out and preach the gospel. Mm. It's not because of anything we've done. It's not because of how great we are. No, it's because of his death on the cross and we take that for granted. We underestimate how powerful and how much love he has for us. And then we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's it. Take I think that it's example. so important. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's huge because you know what? It can even be a phone call. I think I mentioned this before. Yeah. Lost, it, it, can, it doesn't have to be something, a physical labor. It doesn't have to be something, it can just be a mm. phone call, mate, I'm thinking about it, praying for you. Actually, you know what? Can we meet up? I've got some stuff going on. Yeah. It, it just happens. We need to be looking after the brethren. We need to look at the selflessness of Christ mm. and add that selflessness to our own lives. So once we understand that yes. and get a picture on that, we let our lives for the brethren. That's it. And I even think it's it's in our local church and even outside our local 100%. church. 100%. And it's other people that might, hey, look, need something from me. No problem. 100%. And then if they present the opportunity to preach the gospel, that if they do become, they get saved, yeah. they come to the Lord, the, 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 bro, bro, they are the brethren. It's an hour a day. Mm. Or it's, it's an hour a week. Whatever it is, mm. go check up on someone. Go talk to them because our relationships is what builds us up mm. and helps us get closer to Christ. Yeah. Mate, you just G'd me up with that one, bro. Yeah, that is a verse and a half. Ladies and gents, study that verse this week. That's 1 John 3, 16. Mm. Mate, that, uh, by far, I don't care. I'm saying it on the air. That is the best verse of the week we've done so far. Mm. Bro, Jesus Christ is so much more than we're giving him credit yeah, for. 100%. 100%.